Just about ready to start this one from Joe Maresco Stadium, the Ithaca Little Red and the Vestal Golden Bears Stack Boys Championship here on ESPN Ithaca and ESPNIthaca.com. We're in honor of America, so we will pause real quickly as we get ready for the singing of our national anthem here from Ithaca High. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last moon? Whose bright stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight while the ramparts we watched were so gallantly strewn. And the rocket's red flare, the bumper sting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say the star star spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the here from Joe Moresco Stadium as we get set for Section 4 Boys High School Soccer, the Stack Championship. Ithaca and Vestal set to battle. The Little Red coming out in their home whites tonight, white jerseys, white shorts. Ithaca written across the front of the chest with maroon letters and numbers and some gold trim around those letters and numbers and well, as well. The Vestal Golden Bears coming out tonight in their all green aways. Their green jerseys, green shorts, white trim down the side of the jersey and the shorts, white letters and numbers. Vestal written across the front of the chest of the Golden Bears uniforms. Tonight's broadcast brought to you by Simmons Rockwell. See their entire inventory of new and pre-owned vehicles at Simmons-Rockwell.com. This is the start of a very busy week for us here at ESPN Ithaca. This stack championship tonight. Tomorrow, the opening of the Section 4 Class B Boys Soccer Tournament between Union Springs and Dryden. We'll have that for you with coverage starting at 3 o'clock. Uh, whistles start to blur, will be blowing at 3.30 to start that matchup. And Friday, we'll see more action in the second round, and then it just keeps on going and going and going and going, my friend. Lozenges, man, lozenges. <laughs> I told you about Saturday night. I know I caught myself, but I would say something, no words came out. I was getting fed water, coffee, <laughs> anything, any kind of liquids. But it was a, it was crazy crazy doing that many games yeah you know i heard the boys in the on, on this btl show today talking about how it just sounded like it was just one long game and it felt like one long game with a whole bunch of different substitutes coming in <laughs> bouncing from girls to boys to girls to boys but uh it is the best time of the year and i think it speaks highly of the quality of soccer because we're probably not doing it if the play isn't quality. That's true. Tis the season as we get set for this one. 40 minutes have been put on the clock. We wait for the officials to give us the signal. Vestal will start with the ball. They will work from left to right. Ithaca from right to left. The whistle blows. We are underway at the Stack Boys Soccer Championship. Immediately, Ithaca steals the ball back. Amir Omar gets it and gets tripped up. He goes flying, and a whistle blows as it'll be a foul going against the Vestal Golden Bears. That's going against Kyle Barr, the senior. So very quickly, Ithaca restarting action. A ball down the field, and offside is going to be called on Tristan Cornell Roberts. Watch for him to get the ball at his feet multiple times tonight and maybe try to break away for an opportunity. Tries to keep himself on side. Nick, in the last time we came out, we, we, we talked about he's one of the quickest players on the field, if not the quickest player on the field, and he has to make sure that he's moving a little horizontal and not just a vertical north-south game, watching that last defender. Ithaca with control of the ball. Uh, not even a full 50 seconds into the match, and now it's stolen away. Brian Clark, the soft, or the excuse me, the senior, working it down the field. He gets it stolen away at his feet. Pierre Clavel from right to left, right circle. Now to the left circle, pass midfield across. That's headed by the back line of Vestal. But Tristan Cornell Robert gets it at the left outside edge of the 18. Shakes off one defender. Can he get through some more? Close to the six, and that ball goes out of play. And it looks like a goal or a corner kick. Excuse me, will be coming up for the Little Red as it was last touched by the Golden Bears. So early in this one, 
With 38 minutes to play in the first half, corner kick coming up for IHS. And Tristan has his dancing shoes on already. And again, seeing him and Pierre Clavel hook up down his left-hand side is a combination we'll look at a lot tonight. From the near corner arc, one is going, and Sanan tries to get ahead on it. It bounces back. Amir Omar corrals it on in. Mason Wolf giving him some help. He finds it now. To the left side it goes. Here, Tristan, or Pierre Clavel, excuse me, getting the ball lost at his feet off a defender and Kyle Barr. Throwing coming up for IHS. Connor Bonnewell will get ready to toss this one in. He does, but it's right to a defender. And Matt Firminger for Vestal. Mason Wolf, though, brings the ball at his feet for the Little Red. Cross over to the far side of the field to Amir Omar. Takes a couple of hops. Now towards the 18, headed right back by Amir Omar. Ball still loose on the ground, 50-50 touches. Nobody really has possession, and now Vestal gets it. John Scott at midfield, trying to work past two defenders all over him, and he gets the ball stolen away at his feet. Ithaca from right to left as Salco Camo stole that ball. Making a quick run for it as the ball makes its way towards the goal mouth, and Tyler Elliott kicks it out, still in Ithaca's possession. 37 minutes to play in the first half. The tempo of this play is very, very speedy. In the early goings of this one, first half of play, no score. Tristan Cornell Roberts can't work through a defender, but the ball goes out of play near sideline. He'll get ready to toss this one in. And Nick, one of the biggest differences you see tactically from the Little Red from this year to years in the past is the the ability and the desire of the outside backs to get themselves involved in attack. Will Strominger on one side, Connor here on the other side, and it, it puts an enormous enormous amount of pressure on the other team's midfield to have to deal with those two outside defenders getting into the attack so early and often. Vestal ball, it's at the far sideline. Albert Richard making a run for it. It goes out of play at the far sideline. Vestal throwing coming. No, they're going to say it's Ithaca throwing. So that ball was last touch. It looked like the Golden Bears were getting, getting ready for the restart. Instead, it's Ithaca who gets it back. Three defenders all over there for Vestal. They're not going to be able to get much of anything going. Ball at the left side of the circle. Connor McKnight tossing it over to the far side with a little kick. Works his way towards the offensive third, not before it's stolen away by the back line of IHS. Sky high by Luke Sinan. Tristan Cornell Roberts with a left foot to try and bring it on down. He kicks it in front of the Vestal bench. Last touch, though, by Matt Firminger of the Golden Bears, so a throw coming up for IHS, 35 minutes to play first half, no score. That last piece of footwork by Connor McKnight on Vessel's last possession, you see four Little Red players collapse around him, he was still able to come out of it, make a good pass, and a big difference in Vessel tonight as he's playing up top and he's not playing in the midfield, they're going for broke, saying we'll get our best player in the front line, see how much pressure he can put on the Little Red back line. Sample Camo taken down from behind, looking for a call, nothing given to him. Back and forth, 50-50 touches. The ball lands at the feet of Luke Sinan, and now a whistle blows. They're going to give it back to Vestal. The officials originally saying it goes to Ithaca, to which I was slightly confused because I thought there was maybe a little bit of, bit of a push on or from Luke Sinan. What that call was? I thought it was an offside call, a push somewhere. Yeah. Again, a point, little red way, but it's Golden Bear ball. From left to right, the Golden Bears work it. Near their offensive third, almost headed, but instead IHS retains control. Tristan Cornell Roberts now with a cross to, or Connor Bonniewell, I should say, with a cross to really no one at the left side of the circle. Back and forth headers traded three times. Pierre Clavel, near sideline, finds Cornell Roberts. Back to Clavel, left side of the 18. Clavel with one on one going against a Vestal defender. Can he get around him? Yes, he can. It's towards the 18. Mason Wolf up top in some trouble. Wolf getting it lost from behind the back line of Vestal doing its best to kick it out of the offensive third of Ithaca. Over to the far side, the ball takes a couple of hops. Amir Omar with it, outside edge of the 18 on the right side of the field. A little chip shot. Tristan Cornell Roberts trying to get a head on it. His defender, maybe a couple of inches taller, gets the header on. Mason Wolf with a cross over to the far side of the field. Amir Omar with it now. 34 minutes to play in the first half. Still scoreless. Omar closer into the 18. Keeping the ball inside play before it goes over the end line. Here's Salco Camo. 
nearly getting tripped up, and he's going up against Kyler Barr. A size difference between the two of them. Ball goes out of play off of Camo. Vestal will get it back. And Vestal early on, is, is they're maintaining, but we can see right off the top with Pierre Clavel on this left side and Amir Omar on the other side. Ithaca's dangerous, dangerous on the wings and their ability to turn the edge and get around the corner. Ball out of play, far sideline. Kyle Barr making a run for it. He's not going to be able to get to it in time. We'll see Jared Brooks come into the game for IHS. Change is made. He's coming in for Luke Sinan. And we'll also see Carl Thurm coming into the game. And Luke Sinan's been dealing with an injury, which I believe he may have suffered in that Johnson City game. So his time out there on the field is done for now. More than seven minutes in, still scoreless here in the Stack Boys Soccer Championship. Vestal getting tied up. Tom Diefenbauer losing the ball from right to left. Camo works it for IHS. It goes out of play far sideline. Another Ithaca throw and coming. Ithaca has kept the ball in their offensive third for what seems like a majority of the first half, if not all of the first half so far this evening. Here's Brooks. Finds Mason Wolf with the right foot cross, left side to Connor Bonnewell. Changes direction, now goes from left to right. A ref originally going from right to left. Amir Omar with a quick touch. The ball making its way in towards the box. Offside called against Tristan Cornell Roberts. And again, Ithaca exercising a lot of patience. Like you said, Nick, we're eight minutes in, and the ball has been across the, into the Vestal attacking half twice. And here it is off a punt, but it is something that has happened few and far between occasion, on occasion. Ball at top of the 18. Vestal has an opportunity. Mason Wolf steals the ball away. Goes deep down the field. Tristan Cornell Roberts with a man flanked to his right. Can he outrun him? Tristan Cornell Roberts with the ball. Tripped up just outside the edge of the 18. Throws his arm up in the air looking for the foul. He gets it. You can hear the Vestal crowd, a majority of the Vestal crowd down below us. Not liking that call. Thought that both players were fighting fairly for it. Instead... Ithaca will get a beautiful free kick opportunity from maybe, what, 22 yards out or so? Probably. Directly down the middle. He may even be inside the arc, and if it's inside that arc, he's probably about 20 yards out. Premier League on a Saturday morning at 745. Tristan Roberts taking on that last defender. That may be a straight red card. <laughs> taking away a clear scoring opportunity. Last defender could go either way referees here saying I'm going to keep a kid in the game not change the momentum that much but again great 60 yard through ball by Mason Wolf to Tristan Roberts. It's going to be Amir Omar taking this kick with a two, three, five man wall in front for Vestal. 10 minutes in still scoreless. Here's Amir Omar's kick it's a grounder and save is made by Elliot the senior keeper for the Golden Bears. That, that wall is set properly. He found the, the smallest hole to get it straight online to the goalkeeper again golden opportunity for Ithaca Little Red against the Golden Bears early in the game. And on the kick to restart for Vestal, Ithaca immediately wins it back over. We've said a lot of Ithaca so far tonight. The Golden Bears just haven't quite found the momentum to get something going 10 minutes into this match. Here's Tristan Cornell Roberts stifled near sideline. It goes out of play. Albert Richard with a quick touch for the Golden Bears. Another throw in coming up for IHS. Brooks with a throw and he gets it right back a high cross off the head of Mason Wolf into the 18 kicked out Pierre Clavel with it now a cross and it's deflected going from left to right are the Vesto Golden Bears looking towards this near sideline and nearly getting stopped is Connor McKnight ball goes out of play right in front of the Ithaca bench throw and coming up for Vestal as the siren blew and wait for the there we go there's the substitution as Carl Thurm will come into the game for the first time tonight Kyle Barr will, or excuse me, that's Danny Burnett will take a breather. And that's a great potential counter by the Golden Bears. Connor McKnight getting a chance to run out in space. Hammy Allport coming off from his center back position with a sliding tackle. He doesn't make that tackle. Connor McKnight skips down the line and turns it into a two-on-one against Johnson on. And McKnight will get ready for the free kick. It looks like it's going to be a two-man wall for IHS in front. This one from about 30-plus yards out. 
28 minutes to play in the first half, still scoreless. McKnight sends a booming liner close inside the 18. That one is kicked out, but still atop the edge of the 18 for the Vestal Golden Bears. And Little Red trying to do their best job to clear this ball. A whistle blows. Looks like a foul maybe going against the Vestal Golden Bears right near the edge of the 18. So just like that, IHS will get it back. And again, I'm not sure what the call was there. Just guys clearing out, clearing out the box. Referee must have spotted something on a Golden Bears player in the possession. I think that may have been John Scott. Nonetheless, ball right at midfield. Now at the right circle. Vestal with control. It's headed by IHS. And now the ball sky high. Here's John Scott. Can he get something going? No, he can't for the Golden Bears. The ball is nearly cleared. Mason Wolf trying to make a run for it. Pierre Clavel also battling for it, too. Ball goes off the chest, and McKnight uses his shoulder to help him out a little bit, too. Kyle Bard near sideline for Vestal with a cross to McKnight. To the 18th fancy footwork, he's stifled by Sinan. Sinan to Brooks, right back to Sinan. 20, 30 yards down the field himself. To the far side he goes. Looking to Salco Campbell. With a cross inside, ball up top, Jean Sinan losing it. Ball goes out of play, far sideline, and Jean Sinan will head on back towards that back line. He was playing pretty deep up there. Here's the throw into Amir Omar for IHS with a left foot blast. That one's off of a defender. Pierre Clavel, top of the 18, works it with a right foot strike. Off the post after it takes a hit off the keeper's hands, and another save made by Tyler Elliott. Here's another opportunity for IHS, misses wide left. Fantastic, fantastic opportunity there. And again, multiple, multiple little red players getting a chance. Pierre Colville fakes out the first defender at the top of the 18, takes a touch to his right, slams one off the crossbar. Tristan Cornell robbed six yards away. Rebound attempt right back at the keeper. Great double save by the Vestal keeper. Definitely keeping him in this game with 14 minutes to go in the first half. 26 minutes to go, 14 minutes to go. Still no score. Pierre Clavel with it for IHS. Four defenders near him. Across it, Tristan Cornell Roberts. Left side towards the 18. He works it. Cornell Roberts with a cross. Jared Brooks with an opportunity. And that one touches on through after just squeezing by Tyler Elliott. Diving to his left. Ithaca takes a 1-0 lead. 26 minutes to play in the first half. And we talked about that combination of Pierre Clavel, Tristan Roberts on this left-hand side. Pierre finds Tristan. Tristan dances around his, his right back opponent from Vestal. Takes it across about three yards in. Makes the smart play. Gets his eyes up. He doesn't take a low-angle shot. Find Jared Brooks slipping up from his center midfield position. Jared powers through the goalkeeper. One got the little red. The formula is working. Pierre and Tristan down his left hand side has been fantastic all night. That's the combination that led to the goal. That score brought to you by TCAP. Utilize TCAP to save your household up to ten thousand dollars per year on transportation. Map on your trip by visiting TCAPBus.com today. Festo with it. Ball goes out of play. Pierre Clavel will get ready for the throw and for IHS. Here's Jared Brooks, the junior, with the ball at his feet, giving it the go. one nothing lead in tonight's Stack Boys Soccer Championship. Ball at the near sideline now goes out of play in front of the Vestal bench. And again, that, that, that's something that's going to have to be solved by the Vestal coaching staff of how do you stop a player as aggressive and as quick as Tristan Roberts. You know he ain't nothing but bigger than a five-gallon bucket. But he might be the quickest dude on the pitch. And, and, and what do you do with him? He's, a, he's, he's fantastic with both feet. He's a natural right-footed player that loves his left foot, so he's a threat to cut in on his right foot at any time. And if you and if you overplay the right foot, he's just going to dance around you and be able to play balls with his left. Fantastic piece of skill work. And like I said in the first two minutes, he has his dancing shoes on, and he's on full display. Ball went out of play near sideline. Vesta will get it. 25 minutes to play in the first half. one nothing IHS. Tyler Elliott playing a little bit of risk right now. Working that ball around, and he had a, he had a defender right in front of him, Salco Campbell. Here's Tristan Cornell Roberts again. Now the ball rolls to Elliott in goal. He kicks this one out. A big boot, one of the probably one of the biggest we've seen so far this season as the ball goes out of play near sideline. We'll see a substitution. Sean Lyons will come into the game for the first time tonight for Vestal. He'll take over for Kyle Barr. 
Vestal throwing. Here's McKnight at midfield. Salco Camo giving him a problem, stealing the ball away. Camo slowing down the tempo with a player defending him behind. And now the ball is won back over by the Golden Bears. Jordan Lindemann, back line for Vestal, trying to kick it and work it deep down the field. IHS steals it once again. At midfield, Salco Camo with it, with a cross to Tristan Cornell Roberts, all alone towards the 18, and he just misses that one a little left. I tell you what, he had a wide open net as Tyler Elliott came up super far. And that's a, a monster, monster defense splitting pass by Samuel Calco again. Not a an inconsistent starter who's had. Salco's in the start line. No, he's out. He was in it tonight. He had a great first couple minutes on senior night against Corning. 40-yard ball on the ground. Again, Tristan's speed to get in behind the back line. He's quicker than all those guys back there. Probably had 10 more yards to take it in. Goalkeeper just stepped two or three yards off, pushed it to his left. Tristan's been in every dangerous movement of the night. He's been a piece of it. 23 minutes to play in the first half. one nothing Ithaca. Jared Brooks with the ball now. He has the first score of the match so far for the Little Red trying to win its first stack title since 1997. Ball at the far sideline. Amir Omar slowing down the tempo looking for Tristan Cornell Roberts. It's deflected out by the Golden Bears D. From left to right they work it. Big kick downfield really to no one as Johnson on is there for IHS. Looks over to the far side to Will Strominger, but the ball goes out of play. Has Danny Stagliano, the Ithaca keeper, touched the ball tonight? I don't think so. I'm just mentioning his name because he's on the field. But I don't think he's touched the ball at all. And if he was, it was to give a ball back to the guys to take a free kick. And, again, I think that's just indicative of the amount of pressure that the Ithaca midfield is placing on Vestal. And it's something that they were not doing earlier in the season. They've definitely turned the cranks up in the middle third of the field defensively. Let's watch Connor McKnight as the ball goes out of play near the sideline. Sean Lyons may have tried to touch it to McKnight, but McKnight is also very speedy out there. It didn't put him in comparison. He's kind of like a Tristan Cornell Roberts speed-wise. With a green shirt on. Yeah. And he's one of the and he's one of the few players that may be more technical. You know, earlier tonight we saw him back to goal, take a ball off his chest, get half turn, shoulder it down, and knock a volley, perfect volley pass over the top. Very skillful player. Mad respect for that kid's game. Salco Camo taking a big run for the ball from right to left. Defender on him and Matt Firminger. Ball goes out of play. Near sideline. Goal kick coming up for Tyler Elliott, the senior keeper for the Golden Bears. 21 minutes to play first half, one nothing IHS. Tonight's broadcast brought to you by Winks Body Shop, featuring a new, featuring a new claim center on the corner of Fulton to West Court. When it's got to be right, it's got to be Winks. And Nick, we're, you know, we're almost halfway through this first half. Tristan Cornell Roberts, one-on-one -on -one from six yards away with the goalkeeper misses a rebound. One-on-one -on -one, you know, top of the box misses the breakaway. This game could be locked up in 3 nothing in the first 20 minutes. Again, Ithaca is in an offensive flow right now, and it's going to be very tough for Vester to get into this game. They might get something here. Ball towards their offensive third. It's kicked out by Sina. Skied high. Still looked like they had something maybe going their way with three players down towards their offensive third. They just couldn't work it down there. Golden Bears with it once more over to the far side of the field. Ball stolen away. Sanko Camel getting a foot on it. It goes out of play. The Golden Bears will get ready for the throw-in. 20 minutes to play in the first half. 1-0 IHS. Now the ball inside the 18 headed out by IHS. Here's McKnight going towards that back line. Getting some help. Towards the 18, the Golden Bears work it. And the Ithaca defense doing its best job to stifle. Ball takes a couple of stops. Nobody's really there. Now finally, an IHS player coming to save the day. From right to left, they work it. Tristan Cornell Roberts with a header. With a left foot to try and put the ball on the ground. It makes its way over towards Elliott and goal, and he'll get ready to punt this one. 
uh, you know, in the last, you know, last best of possession, they're starting to get into the, into the half, swinging a couple balls around. But there looked to be a little hesitancy right at the top of the 18, and Vesta will be well served. You know, put the ball in Danny Stagliano's hands, make him make a save, but start pumping something in on target, even if it's from 30 yards away. They're just not showing Ithaca that they have mm, the teeth in the attack right now. And to get back in this game, they're going to have to start throwing some shots in to the Ithaca six-yard box. That's still with the restart here on the free kick. Ball is, it looked like it may have caught just a piece of Connor Bannerwell. He got pushed from behind. Right, and, re and referee caught it. Here, the Vestal crowd kind of unhappy with that call, but too late now. The officials are already calling for it. Ball over on the far side as Johnson on makes a quick little dash for it. He finds Strominger in front of him to Mason Wolf. Right foot cross to the right side of the circle to Pierre Clavel. He finds Jared Brooks with one touch to Tristan Cornell Roberts making a big run for it, but Elliott's going to come out of goal and scoop it on up. Tristan Cornell Roberts was right there, though, just in case he mishandled that ball. We're going to say that kid's name a lot tonight again. Super quick, number 32 from Little Red. Been involved in every single piece of offensive attack for the Little Red tonight. Ball worked back towards Tyler Elliott once again. He'll get ready to kick this one away. 18 minutes to play in the first half. 1-0 IHS in the stack. Boys Soccer Championship. Ball here near side out of play. Right in front of the Ithaca bench. Last touch by the Little Red. Throw and coming up for the Golden Bears. It'll be Albert Richard with the throw and immediately touched by Brandon Lindemann. And now it goes out of play once more. You know, just reading the body language and looking at the, the, the Vestal players' faces, I'm not going to say they're beat, but they certainly don't look like the confident bunch that we're used to seeing from, from Vestal. It looks like that goal took, their, took the wind out of their sails a little bit, and especially... Like we said earlier, it could be 3 nothing if it, it just off of Tristan Cornell Roberts' foot. Pierre Clavel going down. To be honest, I didn't really see him get pushed too, too much by a Vestal player. I'm not even sure who really touched him. The Vestal crowd down below not liking that call. And nonetheless, play is resumed. Free kick. Jared Brooks sends one over to the far side to Amir Omar. Salco Camel trying to get a quick touch on it. Now it's stolen away by Vestal. 17 minutes to play first half. 1-0 Ithaca, ball over on the far side of the field. It's McKnight doing a bulk of the work right here, slowing down the pace across deep down the field. The Golden Bear still with it, getting tripped up from the side. A whistle's not blown against IHS. A quick little push and a Golden Bear player going down. Ithaca controls. Clavel, left sideline, slowing down the pace now. Trying to work through defenders across to nobody. The back line of Vestal stealing it away. Sean lines with a cross near side to the far side. And Amir Omar ends up with the ball at his feet. Through to Salco Camo inside the 18, battling for it with Elliott. Both of those players kicking it nearly at the same time. It goes out of play. And a throw coming up for IHS. We'll see Danny Burnett come back into the game for the Golden Bears will take over for Sean Lyons. And the Little Red, they scored that goal so early. And again, playing with a little house money right now, it's allowing them to be a little bit more adventurous in their attacks, getting in behind the Vestal back line and playing a lot of through balls in, taking advantage of an obvious speed advantage, whether it's Chris, Tristan Cornell Roberts or Selco Camel, Amir Omar, Pierre Clavel. They're just saying, we'll turn it into a track meet in your final third, run you back to your goal and see if you can stop us coming. 15 minutes to play in the first half, 1-0 IHS. Here's Jared Brooks, who has the lone score of the game so far. He finds Cornell Roberts with a left foot cross. Ball is up top. Mason Wolf tries to strike, goes off the knees of Vesto defenders. Can Ithaca win it back? They do. It's still in their control. And the ball goes out of play near sideline. No, Pierre Clavel making the sliding stop to try and keep it in play, but now it does go out of play near sideline. And Vesta will get ready for the throw-in. Tonight's broadcast brought to you by Bailey Place Insurance for auto, home business, and life insurance with superior customer service. Or local in on the web at baileyplace.com. Seems like we've sent so many players on IHS's side so far tonight because they really have maintained the bulk of the possession through the first 25 minutes of play. Here's Tyler Elliott, the keeper. 
sending one deep down the field. He's got one heck of a boot. And he's made some great saves so far tonight for the Golden Bears. 50-50 touches back and forth. Tristan Cornell Roberts trying to work it. And it's deflected out by a Vestal defender. That was Matt Firmiger. Making a great effort. That's a late call. <laughs> That's a late call. It probably was a foul, but there's probably a good 20-second delay from the time Tristan gave a slight push in the back to the Vestal defender. Fans getting on the referee a little bit. That's a makeup call. That's late. <laughs> That's late. 14 minutes to play in the first half. one nothing in favor of Ithaca. Ball on the far side of the field. Vestal Golden Bears working it deep in their offensive third, getting pushed from the side. An Ithaca player at the left corner arc. Vestal with it. And the ball deflected on play far sideline. A little hard to see some of these numbers out on the field for the Golden Bears there. Numbers on their jerseys a little smaller. Is Now we see a... Just a, it's the same late call, Dick. It's a push on Will Strominger in the corner that he could have called right on the spot. Vestal thinks it's a foul for them. Referee changes his mind, points the other way. I think it gets it back. Little Red getting a favor. Whistle blows, offside call. Pierre Clavel making a run for the ball. Clock continues to roll, 13 minutes to play. In the first half, 1 0 Ithaca. A little red, a 2 1 winner over Johnson City in the SAC semifinals to get to this point. And the Golden Bears topping Oneonta Saturday afternoon, 3 0 to win its semifinal. A couple of headers traded back and forth. Still near the offensive third, Danny Burnett. Not able to get it through for the Vestal Golden Bears. Now from right to left, Ithaca works it. An IHS player taking a big tumble out there on the field. I think that was Will Strominger getting tripped up and sliding a yard or two. So free kick coming up for IHS. This one's going to be taken from right at midfield. And that's Will Strominger blazing forward 40 or 50 yards from his right back position. And again, it, it is a tactical change that we wouldn't have saw out of Little Red defenders two or three years ago. Big ball down the field. Nothing much of it. Ithaca still with control, though. Near sideline and kicking the ball downfield. It's Connor Bonnewell right to Elliott in goal. He'll get ready to boot this one out. Under 12 minutes to play now in the first half. one nothing Ithaca. Through ball up top. Salco Camo trying to slow it down. He gets one quick touch on it. Sends it towards the mouth of the goal. Tyler Elliott to his left. Scoops it on up. And now he throws it deep down the field. Off the head of a teammate. Now Mason Wolf steals it away. And again, Salco Camo probably had another 10 yards of dribble space there. Or even didn't have to shoot that one had open space in, and this is the part of the game where you'd like to see Ithaca again change tempo a little bit, switch the game up. Everything is win it in the midfield, pump it over the top. You've already pushed Vestal's back line back. You've already defeated their midfield. Now is when you start knocking the ball around, start moving it sideways like they were doing the first couple minutes of the game. They've got to, gotten away from the horizontal game and playing more of a vertical game. Now you'd like to, again, see them switch that up a bit. Kyle Barr in, Carl Thurm out for Vestal. Ball out of play near sideline, last touch by IHS. Vestal throwing coming up. Tonight's broadcast brought to you by Security Mutual Insurance, your hometown insurance company since 1887. Vestal throwing just a little too high for Connor McKnight, the senior, not able to get ahead on it. Deep down the field it goes for IHS. Tristan Cornell Roberts looking up, can't get to it. Near sideline, the ball goes. And back and forth. Pierre Clavel last to touch it right in front of the Vestal bench. Throw and coming up for the Golden Bears. Clavel trying to step in front of the toss. Connor McKnight stealing it. And both players fighting for the ball. Now that was Connor Bonnewell coming in. Excuse me, that was uh, Hammy Alport coming in to steal that ball away. Ithaca will take over control. Ball is on the far side of the field. Salco Camo can't work it down. Players fighting for it on the far side. IHS still with the bulk of the possession here. Stolen away by Vestal. Quick touches, far sideline, whistle blows. Ball goes out of play. Last touch by IHS off the elbow of an Ithaca defender. 
Vestal quick on the restart here. Headed once, towards the near side it goes. It's Burnett looking for a teammate to toss the ball to. No one's there. Here's Tristan Cornell Roberts taking the ball 30 yards himself. Tries to work it through some traffic. He's in some trouble, slowing down the pace. He finds Jared Brooks up top. 30 yards out, left side to Pierre Clavel. Clavel battled from the side, and Jared Brooks keeps the ball still in Ithaca's half. Now it works towards midfield. Brooks with it once more, trying to save it from going out of play. Amy Alport with it. Cross to uh, dashing. Look at him fly, Connor Bonawa. And look out, that ball's going to go right in the stands, right in front of us. Woof. And that's, again, that's Connor Bonnewell making a 60-yard run out of his left-back position. And between him and Will Strominger, this counterpart on the other side, it's just Ithaca's playing with not a perfect game, but the fluidity and the changing of positions from the outside backs and the outside mids. It, it bodes well this stage of the season because, again, they're being able to dump numbers forward confidently and, and expertly at this point in applying pressure to Vestal's midfield and not allowing them to create opportunities on the front end. Still don't think Vestal's had a shot, and I still don't know if Danny Stagliano's touched the ball yet. I don't think we said his name once to make a stop. Eight minutes to play in the first half. one nothing in favor of Ithaca on a score from Jared Brooks. Vestal trying to get something going. Alex Patz, who came into the game momentarily for IHS for Salco Camo. And the ball taken off his chest. Here's McKnight at midfield. Can he work through two defenders? No. Hammy L or Connor Bonowell, excuse me, coming in. Stopping that ball. Goes out of play in front of the Ithaca bench. A throw in. Danny Burnett making a run for it. Going against Sinan. Whistle blows. And a push. And, and you know, Vestal's best player, Connor McKnight. Exceptional skill. But he's 60 or 70 yards away from the end of the goal, and he can dance, 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 dance. They keep him facing the other way. They'll even let him knock a little 10-yard pass there. But he's so far away from the danger area that, that, that it's a push. They'll allow him to get it, collapse with one or two defenders on him everywhere he goes. He's running into Hammy Allport, who has, you know, three inches and 40 pounds on him. Stagliano coming far out of goal before a Vestal player can get to that ball. Connor Barr, first time we've said his name tonight. He'll get ready to boot this one. Connor McKnight is just going to need some help, Nick. That, that, that's my point. Nice. Nice. Get something here as Vestal steals the ball, not before Jared Brooks pops it up a little bit. Whistle blows, a little bit of a push. High kick. High kick. The toes come up around the chin. He probably caught it. <laughs> Definitely mid chest. So free kick coming up for Vestal. Tonight's broadcast brought to you by Phoenix Auto, where you'll find experienced repair technicians and affordable prices at the crossroads in Lansing. Fix it at Phoenix. It's a booming kick towards Stagliano in goal, and he's able to make the stop. It was basically right to him. Vestal player bearing down on him, sure-handed inside a six-yard box. Good 18-yard box presence by Stagliano. Six minutes to play, first half. one nothing Ithaca. Here's Burnett trying to send a ball down the field. It lands right at the feet of Brandon Lindemann. Barr with a quick touch for Vestal. Over to the far side of the field it goes. The Golden Bears still with control of it. From left to right, they continue to work it. Now before it's won back over by the Little Red. And now here's the Golden Bears opportunity from the right circle. They get the ball right back. John Scott looking to go up top to McKnight. Not enough on that pass. 50-50 touches. Mason Wolf with a header to try and put it back on the ground and maybe get something going to Tristan Cornell Roberts. Now the ball over on the far side of the field. Kyle Barr for Vesto. Getting the ball lost at his feet. Battling for it. With Will Strominger. It goes out of play far sideline. Thrown coming up for the Golden Bears. Five minutes to play in the first half. one nothing. Little Red leads. Ball out of play once more. Best still throwing coming up. Golden Bears throw in. Lands at the feet of Kyle Barr. Senior in some trouble. It goes out of play. Starting to sound like a broken record a little bit. 
Another throw, and here's McKnight inside the 18. Can he work closer towards the mouth? Takes a shot. That one looking to the near post, and Stagliano right there to get it on a hop. And I mean, it, and it's I mean, it's looking up for Vessel. I mean, even though the you know the last shot was you know a free kick from 50 yards away, Connor McKnight found you know found six inches of space and was able to actually turn, and get a shot off, and, and threaten the Ithaca goal again. They haven't dominated possession, but they've definitely had opportunities in the last five minutes. Even if they're half chances, it's definitely more than what they got in the first 30 minutes of this game. No question. Throw coming up for IHS right in front of the bench. Throwing off the chest of Pierre Clavel, battling for it with Danny Burnett. A whistle blows. Just a little push from Clavel on Burnett. The Vestal crowd desperate for whistles to go against IHS. Pretty pleased by that call. As you can kind of hear below us, and Ithaca gets the ball right back. Not before the Golden Bears steal it. Lindemann looking at the right side of the circle now. Off the chest of Kyle Barr. McKnight with it at the 18. One-time strike. That one's off of Sanat. Three minutes to play in the first half. one nothing Ithaca. The ball is kicked out of play near sideline. A couple players getting tied up. Connor Bonnewell and a Vesto player still down. And that looks like that's McKnight. Yeah, it is. Slow to get up to his feet. As the whistle blows, or stoppage in play with three minutes and 20 seconds to go in the first half. one nothing Ithaca lead. And McKnight still on the ground, kind of was up for a second and went right back down on his back. Yeah, huge loss for Vestal. It looks like he's favoring that right knee or that right leg. And the official's having a quick word with... Connor Bonnewell trying to maybe calm him down. I'm not sure if there was some extracurricular out there with that collision because Bonnewell was the one that did it. And now Bonnewell kind of throwing his arms up in the air saying, hey, it wasn't me. Hey, it wasn't me. But McKnight is ready to go. He's back up on his feet, so he seems to be okay. So things getting a little chimpy out there. Again, that's a late, late yellow, yellow card. The, ref, yeah, the referee had talked to him and talked to him, and Connor walks away. The referee goes back to him. 30 seconds later, pulls the card out of his pocket. I'm wondering if it's something that Vestal Coach may have said to the referee to elicit a yellow card response from the referee because he certainly wasn't going to, didn't give it to him when he first called him over and talked to him. Bonnewell still visibly upset as he makes his way to the Ithaca bench. Coming into the match is Eric Denbo for the Little Red. Here's a free kick coming up momentarily from about 22 yards out or so. It'll be McKnight getting ready to send this one off, and Bonnewell still <laughs> just absolutely floored and still throwing his arms up in the air wondering what's going on. He was hopping mad. <laughs> and now McKnight coming to the near sideline. He, he has to come off. He yeah. comes on the field for an injured player. He has to come off the field. Yellow card player has to come off the field. That's, that's a one for one. Yellow card, yellow card for Connor. And off the field for Connor. Connor and Connor. <laughs> Carl Thurm will come back into the game for the Golden Bears. So free kick coming up from the right edge of the 18. Brian Clark will get ready to kick this one away. Two men in front for IHS. Stagliano taking a couple of hops on the balls of his feet, getting ready for this one. Clark with a kick. It's low. It's bending. It's kicked out by IHS's defense. The fans loving what they're seeing here. Clock continues to roll. Amir Omar battling for it for IHS. Over to the far side it goes. The Golden Bears with control. Three minutes to play now in the first half. One nothing Ithaca. The ball headed once, headed twice. Stagliano with a save to his left. Well done by Vestal, and it is evident that the last ten minutes of the half, Vestal stole all the momentum. And I, and you know, we'll talk about it at halftime. But I'm thinking Ithaca missed those two early chances to go up three nothing, and they started to press a little bit, and it has certainly had an effect on them because they're not as fluent as they were in the first ten minutes of the game. 
Kyle Barr getting ready to come in to try and make a something happen. Will Strominger, though, stepping in. A big ball deep down the field. Tristan Cornell Roberts making a run for it for IHS, but helping him out is Jared Brooks. Cornell Roberts can't get to this ball. It's one back over by Vestal, not before Amir Omar steals the ball away. <laughs> it's stolen away by Vestal, which is back and forth and back and forth, steal after steal for both teams. We'll let it play out for a second. Mason Wolf has it. Far sideline to a cross. Given back to Vestal. Two minutes to play first half. Still 1-0 Ithaca in the stack. Boys soccer championship. To the back line. Strominger sends one down the field. Amir Omar making a run for it. Now it makes its way towards goal. Kicking it deep is Tyler Elliott. Great clearance by the Vestal goalkeeper. Mentioned it once. Not worth or doesn't hurt mentioning again that he's certainly got a big boot. So... That plays to the Golden Bears' advantage. Jared Brooks with the steal, stolen away by Vestal. Pierre Clavel now stealing it with defenders in front of him. He's able to work through both of them, and the Ithaca crowd loves that. Now he slows down the tempo with under a minute 30 to play. A big cross down over to the far side. Amir Omar off the chest now on the feet. Left foot cross to the far side. Towards the 18, Tristan Cornell Roberts making a run for it. Over the goal line, out of play. Vestal will get it back with one minute remaining. In the first half, and coming back into the game, Connor McKnight taking no, over for Carl Thurman. In the last 90 seconds, was Ithaca's best play in the last 20 minutes. Again, when they get multiple players on the ball in the midfield, and they're not necessarily looking for that that last pass through the back line, that's when they're at their best. Tristan Cornell Roberts getting the ball towards his feet, and all, that's all of a sudden Tyler Elliott coming out of goal and making the stop. Both players kind of locking with each other for a second and it's Elliott able to hold on to the ball punch this one away 30 seconds to go in the first half and it'd be easy to say that Tyler Elliott has been Vestal's best player this half definitely done his job to make this score just a one nothing game because it very well could be game set match at at least three or four nothing with some of Ithaca's chances Big ball downfield for IHS. Tristan Cornell Roberts with a defender. Gets it through one at the 18. He tries to get a strike off. That one misses off the deflection. 14 seconds to play in the first half. Vesta with McKnight at the left circle. Sends it deep down the field. Actually, excuse me on that. There was only a couple of seconds left on the clock. So the clock strikes zero. And that'll do it for the first half of play. Ithaca leading one nothing over Vestal in the Stack Voice Soccer championship game. Full halftime analysis coming up. Stick with us. This is Section 4 Boys High School Soccer. On Back here from Joe Morasco Stadium. The Ithaca Little Red leading 1-0 over the Vestal Golden Bears. A Stack Boy Soccer Championship. Whistle blows. We're back underway. Nick Karski and Lamar Peters with you tonight. Ithaca will lose the ball here near sideline right in front of their own bench. Vestal will get set for the throw-in. Tom Dyfenbauer with the throw-in. Quick touch. Brian Clark with it. From right to left, the Vestal Golden Bears are working it. Here's Brandon Lindemann taking the ball 20 yards himself over to the far side. He gets it right back. Lindemann sending one towards P.O. Ted, who's in this game for the first time tonight, playing up top. He sends a ball that's stolen away by the Golden Bears defense. Left circle, the Golden Bears with it. Taking the ball and getting tripped up. Brian Clark, the senior. As a whistle blows, as we get ready for the free kick, let's pause real quickly. 10 seconds station ID. This is Section 4 Boys High School Soccer. ESPN Ithaca, 1160, and now at 1071 FM, WPIE, Trumansburg, Ithaca, Lansing. Connor McKnight will get ready to send this one off for the Golden Bears. A minute, five seconds into play. 
A little chip shot that's headed by Ithaca's back line, but it's still inside the 18. Vestal with a cross. It's John Scott sending one, and now it makes its way to the feet of Sinan. He sends a big ball deep down the field to Tristan Cornell Roberts. He can't corral it on in. It goes the other way. Jordan Lindemann sending one to McKnight from right to left. Vestal has looked really, really solid for the last 20 minutes of the first half, and now for the opening two minutes or so of the second half. Like I said, they look like they look like the defending stack champions. They look like a, they look like the team that's won this thing multiple, multiple times. And I think one of the adjustments they've made, they dropped McKnight from the front line, dropped him into the midfield, and just like Corning, they got a five-man midfield. And it's going to be up to Ithaca to adjust to it because they've had the bulk of possession again, Nick, the last 20 minutes of the first half, and definitely in the first two minutes of this second half. Throw in right to Tristan Cornell Roberts off of his feet. So throw in coming up. Bauer sends this one off. He goes to the feet of Kyle Barr. Defenders near him. Crossover to Lindemann. Over to the far side it goes. Trying to battle for the ball is Ithaca, and they steal from left to right they go. A big through ball down the field to Tristan Cornell Roberts, making a big run for it. Tristan Cornell Roberts towards the 18, loses it, goes out of play, far sideline thrown, coming up for IHS. Tonight's broadcast brought to you by Steve Seguis of Warren Real Estate. For experience, knowledge, and professionalism, contact Steve at IthacaHomeFinder.com. Still thinking Ithaca can put their, put their foot on the brakes a little bit more and let, uh, let the numbers come. You know, they're going through balls to Tristan. He's running away from the midfield, and if he doesn't get around that corner, there's no options and then he's just left with taking his player on and at some point that gets predictable you run out of options and it's, it's Vestal going back the other way again they're lo- Ithaca's losing the, the, the desire to keep the ball and Vestal seeing the lion's share of it and again Vestal likes the up and down game right now because they know they can get back to the Ithaca 18 yard box and produce chances and opportunities Vestal with it here once again. And it's Lindemann through some traffic. Towards the 18, the ball rolls. A whistle blows, and a foul's going against the Golden Bears. Think of anything there, he's going to call that on Ithaca for obstruction and not letting Lindemann continue his run. Kind of just a body block by Allport right on the, the Vestal attacker. one nothing Ithaca. Ball stolen away by Danny Burnett. Goes out of play near sideline, near his own bench on the left side of this field. Ithaca throwing coming up. Four plus minutes have gone by. Ithaca still holds the advantage. one nothing, Thanks to a score by Jared Brooks. Right around 14 minutes into the match. Here's Danny Burnett taking the ball 20 yards down the field himself. Getting a challenge from Will Strominger off the feet of Strominger, the senior Throwing coming up for the Vestal Golden Bears. And just sitting where we're sitting, Nick, you can see Vestal has players wide open in the middle of the midfield. And, you know, I'm just watching the Ithaca team not be aware of a player standing, you know, 25 away from 25 yards away from the goal, wide open. Throwing coming up, the Vestal fans very vocal. And some of the Vestal players had to go chase a ball to get this throw in and restart. That probably took a good maybe 20 seconds off the clock or so. McKnight sending a cross over to the far side of the field to Lindemann. Back over to McKnight. Tries to get something going, but Ithaca's defense stopping him. Big ball down the field to P.O. Tet. At the right half of the field, he finds Tristan Cornell Roberts, who gets tripped up from the side. Whistles don't blow. And Cornell Roberts slow to get to his feet on his knees. Now he's finally back up. At the right side of the circle, it's McKnight with it for Vestal. Right foot cross to the far side of the field. And her getting in there is Connor Bonnewell with the left foot. Kicks it out of play. Throwing coming up for the Golden Bears. Just about six minutes into the second half, one nothing Ithaca. And again, Nick, it looks like we're just looking at a game of attrition right now. Both teams just really going straight up and down the field, seeing who can get beyond who's back line. Not a whole lot of elegance, certainly not the ball movement that we saw from the Little Red the first ten minutes of the game. 
the ball movement coincidentally that had produced three, four golden opportunities in the first ten minutes of the game. Clock continues to roll. 33 minutes to play in the first half. Or the second half, excuse me. Tristan Cornell Roberts will take the ball at his feet. Danny Burnett with it. Whistle blows. Change of possession coming up. The little Wren will get it. We can continue to hear the crowd below us. For Vestal visibly frustrated that it's kind of taking long to retrieve these balls and restart the game, or I should say uh, continue with the match, I should say. Hey, down here tripping. <laughs> Ball goes out of play here near sideline right. Uh, no, actually stays in play. Looked like it had a tough angle and that may have gone out in front of the Ithaca bench. Instead, it still stays in. Emmy Alport with a cross over to the far side of the field. Pierre Clavel making a run for it, going against a Vestal defender out of play far sideline. Whistles blow. And I'm not quite sure what the call is here, quite honestly. I'm going to see what the official signal. 32 minutes to play. And a free kick or a throw in coming up for Ithaca now on the near side of the field. Questionable calls all night, Nick. Well, that ball went out of play on the far sideline. I don't know why they would work it back here towards the near side. You know, we leave the referees alone usually, man. Here's the ball. Tristan Cornell Roberts offside. And I'm keeping track. That's six. Six offsides on Ithaca tonight. Corning game, they were offside once. And again, it's just coming down to style of play right now. And I'm going to say it doesn't suit them right now for the game that they're in. Get the ball back on the deck. And this is both teams. Both of these teams are skillful enough to actually use player movement. And, and passing to work the ball through their opponent. And, again, both teams are going direct in just a battle of attrition, seeing if they can get the ball in behind the opponent's back line. From left to right, Mason Wolf losing control of the ball. Vestal with it. McKnight with a left foot touch at the right side of the circle. Back and forth they go. And it goes back in possession of IHS. A big through ball deep down the field. Amir Omar, no defenders around him. Right outside edge of the 18. Now inside of the 18, Amir Omar goes. Tristan Cornell Roberts with a left foot strike. Diving save and a beauty too from Tyler Elliott, the senior keeper. Ball still in play. Over to the left side. It's Pierre Clavel in some trouble. Clavel with it riding that near left side goal line. It goes out of play. And the Vestal Golden Bears will get it back. But how about that save by Elliott? He's been playing lights out tonight. And he's the difference. He's the difference between a one nothing game right now and a 4-5-0 or five nothing game. Again, Mason Wolf pumps a 40-yard ball out into the channel for Amir Omar. First time in 30 minutes that we've seen Ithaca turn the corner. Amir plays into Tristan again. Tristan dips across the top of the 18-yard box and hits an absolute laser low to the goalkeeper's right who gets a hand on it, pushes it out for a good save. Right foot cross to Tristan Cornell Roberts. Can he get there in time? Battling a defender coming out of goal very deep is Elliott right at the 18 dives makes the stop before Trish, or Tristan Cornell Roberts can get anything going now Danny Burnett with it and right how many times has Tristan been in on top of that keeper ball makes his way to the back line McKnight making a big run for it trying to beat Sinan Johnson not able to get to it and Johnson on taken Burnett tumbling down no whistles blown as the ball goes out of play near sideline Quickly, Vestal with a throw in. 29 minutes to play in tonight's match. 1-0 IHS. The ball goes over the goal line. Last touch by the Golden Bears. Goal kick coming up for the Little Red. And again, Ithaca's aggression a little bit, producing chances. Not the possession that we're used to seeing, but definitely Amir got around that corner and produced Ithaca's best chance in at least the last 40 minutes. Over the far sideline, Kyle Barr, the senior, making a run for it. Trips up an Ithaca player and Pierre Clavel. Both players taking a fall on the ground. Barr is going to be called with the trip. Ithaca gets it back. From left to right they work. It's at the left side of the circle. Now over to the far side of the field. A through ball up top to Tristan Cornell Roberts. What's that offside call number seven on the yep. little red? And I'm, and I'm just keeping a quiet count. 
because again it's just indicative of the impatience that they're showing they're pushing 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 for that second goal because they know how important it is again it's a second goal that the festival's keeper is seeming like he doesn't want to give up because he's been outstanding since the 14th minute when they scored the first and only goal Ball towards Stagliano, Ithaca keeper scoops it on up. Kyle Barr was right there, and it had Stagliano bobbled that ball or something. That ball may have been able to be tucked in for Vestal's first score of the game. 28 minutes to play in tonight's match. IHS leading 1-0. Ball out of play, far sideline. Ithaca will get it back. Tonight's broadcast brought to you by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Vestal's played much better since Connor McKnight dropped himself into the midfield or not dropped himself. The coach probably made that tactical switch. He just wasn't seeing the ball. And man-to-man, a 4-4-2 versus a 4-4-2, Ithaca's midfield and Ithaca's outside backs, where they were just too much for Vestal in the first 20 minutes of the game, and they were rewarded with a goal. But the game has settled since McKnight has settled back into the midfield. Ball rolling towards senior keeper Elliott for Vestal. He tossed it deep down the field. Battle for it. Brian Clark was in there for the Golden Bears. Vestal gets it. A big ball deep down the field. It's making its way towards Stagliano for IHS. He fields it. It's ready to boot this one away. 27 minutes to play in tonight's match. And Stagliano has been in as much command of his 18-yard box as the Vestal keeper has. Two good games by goalkeepers. And sometimes it doesn't have to be spectacular game-saving saves, but a keeper's presence in his 18-yard box can bode well for team success. Amir Omar with a little chip. P.O. Tech is right there, headed once, tries a bicycle kick it with another opportunity, tucks it into the left side of the net. Ithaca takes a 2-0 lead, 26 minutes to play in tonight's match. Tristan Cornell Roberts to get involved on the right hand side and just throw and just throws a ball into the box. Nothing, nothing too crazy. P.O. Tet jumps, a si- <laughs> attempted side scissor kicks, attempted side volley. Ball gets knocked down by a Vestal defender. Amir Omar opens up his hips, chucks it away inside of his left foot to the keeper's right. That's the breathing space that Ithaca Little Red have been looking for since the first 15 minutes of this game. How, how does Vesta respond? Because they've had a response. Can they keep pushing? Can Connor McKnight have an impact on this game? Does Ithaca keep going through balls? Or does Ithaca settle down, start knocking the ball around, making Vestal chase for these last 26 minutes? They're 26 minutes away from some recent history for the little red boy soccer team. That score by Amir Omar lighting up the Ithaca crowd well down the field to our right. The stands pretty much below us are full of Vestal fans, but to our right, even more down the field. The Ithaca crowd has packed those stands, and you could hear them. Obviously excited that Omar has the ball now. He has their second score of the game, a through ball to P.O. Tech. Can he get there? No. <laughs> Become is Tyler Elliott with a big move down the field. <laughs> Seven yards. I mean, he, and he's in every ball that comes back to him. He's catching every piece of He's not miskicking. He's not slicing off. He is starting counterattacks from his 18-yard box by himself. A little chip to Elliott. He'll get ready to boot this one away. This might be one of the better performances we've seen by a keeper this season. And his team's down 2 nothing. And very rarely do we say that. But Elliott's really played an outstanding match. 25 minutes to play in the match. As a whistle's going to go against Jared Brooks. A little touch on uh, McKnight. Speaking of goalkeepers. Is he as good as what you saw from the Johnson City goalkeeper the other night? Oh, it's back and forth. He can't put me on the spot for that. I might. It's hard to tell. <laughs> you go, you do a game without me. I'm asking. <laughs> Honestly, both both keepers have done a really sensational job. And Tyler Elliott, Johnson City's keeper. Here's a ball that's off the chest of a Vestal defender. Ball now sky high. Carl Thurm trying to get in on the action for the Golden Bears. Right foot cross by Will Strominger, trying to find Tristan Cornell Roberts, and another offside call on the junior. Put a leash on that kid. <laughs> Grab him. Get that. Get yourself. There's ways to attack that back line. And what Tristan needs to do, 
take that take that vertical run, pause and back it out and let the ball be delivered. Then you can get in. It's like um, it's like running the sideline pattern, except that you're not going to face up to the sideline. You're actually going to back out of the space, and you can still see the ball played. You can see the defenders, and you can see the space you want to. Right now, he's looking backwards for a ball, and he's losing the timing. Here's Tristan Cornell Roberts again inside the 18. Shanks off one defender, tries to get a shot off. It's off the defender, Amir Omar, with a cross towards the top of the 18. Slowing things down. Now P.O. Tent with an opportunity and another offside call. And that's a great ball by Elmadin Hassani in off the bench. Cocked up, cocked the left foot back like he was going to shoot it. Pulled it back down and found P.O. Tent just a yard offside. Good piece of combination play at the top of the 18-yard box by Lil' Ray. A little bit of offense has all of a sudden started to wake up. A goal will do that for you. Yeah, that's a goal true. will do it for you. 24 minutes to play in tonight's match. IHS up 2 nothing. Scores from Jared Brooks and Amir Omar. Nearly identical. Both with 26 minutes to play in their respective halves. Brooks in the first half. Omar in the second. Right foot cross. Back and forth, 50-50 touches. No one has clearly really won possession in the last 20 seconds or so. Now Vestal gets it near side. Brian Clark looking for Connor McKnight. Ball lost at his feet. Will Strominger with it. Ball up top to Tristan Cornell Roberts. Tristan Cornell Roberts battling for it. Inside the 18, getting it lost from behind. And a push is going to go against an Ithaca player. I happen to miss all the action. Right towards midfield, apparently. You're catching some defensive work by the center back and senior Hammy Allport and Will Strominger. Excellent, excellent defending from those two. Fantastic 1v1 work, but what's happening is after they win it, they're making very, very smart, technically sound decisions on the ball. Two seniors, again, the center back and the right back, holding Connor McKnight in check and, again, triggering a lot of offense coming out of the back third for the Little Red. Ball outside of the left circle. Vestal with control. Ball to Connor McKnight. Right edge of the 18, getting tripped up, falling to the ground. Foul going against IHS. So a key free kick now for the Vestal Golden Bears. It'll be McKnight kicking this one from about 26 yards out or so from the right edge of the field 22 minutes to play his team down 2-0 to Ithaca he sends this one towards goal it's nearly headed and that one sails wide left and that's, and that's a good look came in with a hesitation made the wall move possibly through the Ithaca defenders off served it in to the back post and you had the number 8 John Scott the sophomore who's been outside of Connor McKnight he's been the best offensive threat that the, that the Golden Bears have had tonight Good ball, had a good free look. Smart bullet header, just five yards wide of the goalpost. Mason Wolf back in the game for IHS. Jared Brooks out of this one. Jordan Lindemann sends one from right to left for the Golden Bears. Here's Brandon Lindemann. Far side of the field, ball is lost by Vestal. Out of play, far sideline. Ithaca will get it back. Tonight's broadcast brought to you by CSP Management. Real estate management and development where community matters. Throw in, ball lands at the feet of B.O. Tet. <laughs> Tristan Cornell Roberts making a run for it. Tristan Cornell Roberts inside the 18, being the keeper and finds the left side of the net. No, wait, no, they're not calling for it. The Ithaca crowd is going nuts, and so is the Ithaca bench. Did he score or not? That's a goal. That is a goal. There it is. That's a goal. Tristan Cornell Roberts not netting his first score of the game. 3 nothing. Ithaca leads with 20 minutes to play. Bang on the door, bang on the door, bang on the door, bang on the door. It doesn't have to get open. Eventually, it's going to get knocked down. And Tristan Cornell Roberts from the first whistle has been an absolute threat to the Vestal goalkeeper. And that right there. That may be the one. I'm not saying it's over yet. But Tristan, well rewarded for persistence, 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 speed, quickness, tenacity. One of the smallest players on the field having the biggest impact on the, on the game tonight. Brian Clark trying to work it through defenders. Mason Wolf coming in to steal the ball. Now with it near sideline. 
is Will Strominger. He lands at the feet. Jordan Lindemann tries to work it from right to left out of play in front of the Vestal bench. Throw and coming up for the Little Red. It'll be Strominger getting ready to toss this one in off the head of Pio Tet. 3 0 Ithaca. It's kind of hard to see as that ball goes out of play. That If that ball went in from Tristan Cornell Roberts. It, it was, I'm going to tell you what, though. It was, the, it was the fake Nick that he threw to get the goalkeeper to drop to the ground, and then he was able to dance around him. Even though you have two Vestal players retreating, that Vestal defender has to be aware that P.O. Tet was on Tristan's right. He could have pulled that down and slotted it across. And that's one that Hungry Fork wanted to reward himself for the, nights of, the night of frustration, and he, and he has his goal. 19 minutes to play in tonight's match, and Ithaca with a commanding 3 nothing lead. In the stack, boys soccer championship. Ball goes out of play over the yellow. And again, this is a Golden Bear team that beat Ithaca 2-1 to one mere, mere weeks ago. And again, Ithaca had been on a little been on a little streak, had beaten Vestal 2 nothing here. But uh, in a sign of quality and potentially things to come, the Little Red again, hot. Started with that beat down of horse heads and caught Elmira slipping and Corning came in here. After having beat the Little Red again two weeks previous, they dropped a seven on them, and uh, and they very well could have been up seven nothing in this game right here, yeah. without some great goalkeeping by Elliott. Uh, this easily is a four, five, six nothing game. Kyle Barr, Danny Burnett back into the game for the Golden Bears, taking over for Carl Thurm, and let's see who else comes out of the match for Vestal. And that's Sean Lyons, who will also come out of the match. 18 minutes to play. 3-0 Ithaca. McKnight, left side of the 18, loses the ball right at his feet. Now the ball takes a couple of hops at the left circle. Tristan Cornell Roberts trying to make something out of it. Nothing is there, though. Near sideline, it's Tom Diffenbauer. Right on through. The ball, Tristan Cornell Roberts can maybe get to. He's got to make a big run for it towards the far side of the field. Going against Jordan Lindemann. Far sideline. Vestal sends a through ball. Johnson on is there. Grabs it. Kicks it with the left foot down the field. Goes off a of Vestal defender. Anthica will get it back with a throw in exactly 18 minutes to play in tonight's match. So what do you do, Nick, if you're an Ithaca Little Red opponent? They can go route A straight down your gut and be successful with it. They can swing the ball sideways, play it through the midfield. The defenders are coming out of the back with speed, with technique. Johnson on has the back end on lockdown with Hammy Allport. I mean, they got weapons all over the field. Bodes well, going into, a, again, a Section 4 championship two weeks from now. 17 minutes to salt this one way, kill this game off. We could be watching a special season from a special group of kids because they're definitely doing something and playing in a way that we haven't seen at Moresco Field in a few years. Little Red just 17 minutes away from winning its first stack boys soccer championship since 1997. Even the last time they won before that was a pretty big streak. Before winning in 1999 or 1997, excuse me, the last time they won a stack title was in 1979. Whistle blows, I believe, an offside going against Tristan Cornell Roberts. Yeah. Goal kick coming up for Vestal. Another big boot for Tyler Elliott off the head of a little red defender. Ball takes a couple of hops on the right side of the circle. It's going over to the far side of the field, makes its way back towards Elliott and goal, and he boots this one sky high, 50 plus, maybe even 60 yards down the field. Give, give him, let's say he's at the, you know, he's at the 18, he ate up 50, there's 32 there, drop him into 35, we're calling that a 60 yard, 60 yarder with backspin on it. Ball out of play, far sideline, foul going against IHS, free kick coming up, McKnight will take this one from about 22 yards out from the right side of the field. 15 minutes to play, 3-0 Ithaca. 
and that's a and that's a dangerous spot. And he's walking and he's walking that in with his right foot. He's going to be able to bend that to the far post, or he can see if he can catch Stagliano slipping to stick one in to his near post. Definitely, definitely a dangerous opportunity. And again, 15 minutes to go. This game is not over yet. Looks to be a four-man wall in front of him for Ithaca. McKnight will get ready to boot this one up. He does. It's skied high, and it goes just over the football goalpost here for Moresco Stadium. So a little too much air on that one. Eric Denbo will come in for IHS. He'll take over for Hammy Alport. Who's had an outstanding game. Senior center back. Just been strong, and he has been pretty much the first line of defense against Connor McKnight. Every turn Connor McKnight has made, he's had the number eight sitting in his back. He turned him, he had him sitting in his face, and just very good coverage, very good support for Johnson on. And yeah, to go with it from left to right, Pierre Clavel to Tristan Cornell Roberts. Ball out of play, far sideline. That should be a song. What should Pierre Clavel? To Tristan Cornell Roberts. They've been working it all night. <laughs> I don't think I know how to react to that. Maybe we should sing everything. <laughs> all the play by play here. 14 minutes to go. Out of play, far sideline. Vesto losing it. Ithaca will get it back. Throwing coming up. Tristan Cornell Roberts looking to get the throw in. Ball goes out of play once more. Certainly a cool autumn evening here from Joe Moresco Stadium. Whistle blows. Vestal's going to get it back, and they're quick to restart here. Uh, ball to Connor McKnight. He has to make a big run for it with two defenders near him. Jean Sinan picking the ball on up from left to right. He works. 25 yards down the field, getting tripped up. He's looking for a whistle. Nothing called, though. Mason Wolf slowing down the tempo for the Little Red. Ball over on the far side of the field, and players still fighting for it. Mason Wolf pulls back after going in a little bit. A little Strominger through defenders with a cross, and another one looking for P.O. 10. Stolen away by Vestal. A big ball deep down the field. It's McKnight against Sinan. Sinan giving him a big run for his money, and he might be called for the push. He was all over him. I think the ball just actually went out of play far sideline, so... He said Connor McKnight has had a, a, a little red defender on him at, a, at every step. He had the one turn er, late in the first half where he was able to catch, you know, two or three feet of space. He's had a couple free kick attempts, one one other shot opportunity in the second half where he got blocked, but he's pretty much been negated. Again, wonderfully, wonderfully technically gifted player, just hasn't had that 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 foot, that two feet of space that he's needed to really, really threaten the, the little red defense. Ball on a plane here, sideline. Ithaca throwing coming up, 12 minutes to play, 3 nothing IHS. I'm here, Omar using his shoulder to try and stop that ball. Danny Burnett with it now, trying to keep it in their offensive third. He does just that, not before, losing it. P.O. 10, trying to get it for IHS. A little behind the back toss to Amir Omar. Gets pushed from behind. Whistle finally blows. And it was Tom Deifenbauer. Referee waiting to see if there was going to be an advantage. And again, you look at P.O. Tech, you look at that last piece of skill by Amir Omar. We've seen it from Trista tonight, seen it from Mason, seen it from Elmer and Hassan. He's seen it from Pierre Clavel. Little red players, a lot of them oozing with confidence, oozing with technical ability on the ball, and it's in these situations where they're up two, three, four goals where you can really see the, the technical abilities and how it adds to to the, the style of play. I mean, it's entertaining soccer when they're doing their thing. 3 nothing IHS with 11 minutes to play against the Vestal Golden Bears in the Stack Boys Soccer Championship. Whistle blows, fouls going against the Golden Bears free kick coming up from about 40 yards out or so for IHS. A little Red will get ready to boot this one away. A little chipper close to the box. It's headed. Diving stop. 
midair. Tyler Elliott making the save, basically floating in midair. Great ball by Pierre Clavel. Again, that's Connor. It's Connor Bonniewell left back up. Good header, not all the power that he wanted, but good height. And again, good diving save by Mr. Elliott. At least his seventh or eighth wonderful save that he's made tonight. And again, he's the difference between a 3 nothing game and a 7 nothing game at this point. Ball goes down the field right back towards Elliott. Works at left side. Ten minutes of play. The Ithaca fans, the student section, way down the field to our right. A little sing-along. Thinking that this one's over. On the 3-0 score against some normal opponents, I'd say maybe, but against Vestal, I wouldn't say quite yet. This is a team that's looking to win back-to-back -back stack championships. They've won 24 of them, dating all the way back to the late 60s. I mean, and to be, you know, brutally honest, Vestal has been the class of the stack. But, I mean, if you said 24, they've been for 30 years. Yeah. They they are they are the team to beat. And, you know, being in the area for a while, I, I, I know the history. I remember when some of these guys were playing JV and had beaten, they had, Ithaca JV hadn't beaten Vestal in 20 years. And these are some of these guys, you know, as eighth graders. To, to, to get that win and you started to see it turn and you would just wonder when they would be able to get the jump on the Vestal. And in Class AA, it's harder to win the stacks than it is to win the section. And, again, this is as much a, a credit to the Ithaca season as going on and winning the sectional title. To actually win stacks, again, for a long, long time has been the trophy to win in Section 4. Real quickly, we saw a yellow card. John Scott called with a yellow, so we resume action. Ithaca with the kick. Mason Wolf kicks it inside the 18. Loses it. Burnett trying to make a run for it for Vestal. Amir Omar ends up with it at its feet. Up top look. Ithaca. Piotet inside the 18. Right foot cross. Tristan Cornell Roberts is near there, but nothing's going to be made of it. It's a whistle blows. And the, and the guys, they're, 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 playing, they're playing for more. Ithaca wants to put the fourth in. They want to put the fifth in. And they're, again, been, for my taste, a little impatient. A little, a little bit too much dirt, dirt, route A, a little too direct. When they've had the chance to knock the ball around, they've been successful with it, but they're definitely out to make a statement. They came into the season thinking that they would be three or four goals better than every single team that they've played. And with the score they put up against a Horsehead, with the score they put up against a Corning, score they put up against an Elmira, and again, this 3 nothing right here, it's coming to a fruition what a lot of these guys thought would be the end to a stack season. Max Gaeta and Selko Camo back in the game for IHS. Eight minutes to play, 3 nothing Ithaca. Ball left side of the field here. Back and forth touches, headed by Elmadin Hassani for the Little Red. Vestal with it, though. Once more, from right to left, they work it. McKnight getting a quick touch on it, trying to get the ball back. It's stolen away by Connor Bonniewell to the far side of the field. He finds Tristan Cornell Roberts in another offside call against the Speedy Junior. Call him, dude, tonight. Call him. <laughs> call him. Talk to him about that. Again, we saw, we saw him hold himself back against Corning. Only made one. That's the tenth offsides on the little red tonight. And again, in a rush, in a hurry, a little impatient to get to that 18 yard box. And again, there's a lot of different ways to put pressure on an 18 yard box. It doesn't always have to be that 40 yard through ball. Amir Omar with that ball to Tristan Cornell Roberts. Two defenders to either side. Works it through both of them. A left foot strike, diving to make the stop and fielding it on a hop is. Tyler Elliott, the senior, just continues to shine for Vestal as he tosses this one deep down the field. It's at the right half of the circle and immediately won back over by Ithaca. Seven minutes to play in tonight's match. 3 nothing. Little Red leads. Substitutions coming up momentarily. Andrea Aranea will come in for IHS for Amir Omar. Hammy Alport will come back in, taking over for Erica Denbo. 
And we'll also see a new keeper in net for Danny Stagliano. And that's going to be Karen Sandiford. We had seen those two guys pretty much doing half games up until about the last four or five games of the season. And I'm going to say Coach Gilbert has found his guy in Danny Stagliano, the senior. Karen Sandiford, a transfer student, a junior, will definitely be the number one guy going in to next year. Another skillful goalkeeper, good with his feet, good presence in his 18-yard box, will, and literally, pun intended, will have Ithaca in good hands next year. Six minutes to play, and it's a 3 nothing Little Red lead. Ball at the left side of the circle, Mason Wolf, left foot cross over to the far side, looking for Tristan Cornell Roberts, fields it on a hop, takes it on a hop, I should say. Omidin Hassani working it on the far side. Out of play it goes. Excuse me, that was Pierre Clavel fighting for it on the far side. Throwing coming up for the Golden Bears. The ball trickles right at midfield, takes a stop there. Near sideline. It's Dyfen Bauer sending a cross right to the back line of Ithaca. Araneo trying to work it from left to right. He finds Salco Camo, who loses the ball right at his feet. Dyfen Bauer trying to get something going. Tristan Cornell Roberts is at the 18. He finds Elmadin Hassani. One foot last. That one just misses a little wide right to left that, foot. That's a great combination between those two. Good hustle, good physical play by Araneo here just underneath the press box. Feeds the ball into Tristan Cornell Roberts. Little cross run with Elmadin Hassani. Elmadin 20. 18 yards away with a good shot pushes it back across the goalkeeper's face just wide of the post again good interplay between those two tonight's broadcast brought to you by specialty trophies and awards for custom engraved trophies medals and plaques for your sports team or organization four minutes to play three nothing at the ball at midfield tristan cornell roberts with a right foot cross, Salco Camel getting tripped up. Officials finally waving the flag on a little bit of a push. So a free kick coming up from about 35 yards out. Salco Camo trying to just get that one towards goal as Tyler Elliott came out a little too far. Well, he had him. He had, he had, he caught he him. Have. He, he had him dead, but you know, got to have the technique, a touch more patience. But up three nothing. Why not give it a pop from 30 yards away? Salco Camo. Through defenders, the Ithaca crowd loving it. Over to the right side. Whistles blow. Vestal had it. Ithaca will get it back. Referee coming with a late, late challenge on Andrew Arenelio, who had slipped it in to Sal Cole before Sal Cole went on that little dribbling exhibition. Ithaca didn't gain an advantage from it. There was a foul on the play. Referee called it back. Good decision letting the advantage play out. Ithaca didn't gain it. Correct call. Ithaca milking the clock here with under three minutes and 30 seconds to play. And leading this one 3 nothing. Mason Wolf will get ready to boot this free kick about 40 yards out. Sends this one inside the 18. It's headed. Now headed out. Now kicked out by Vestal. Deep in the offensive third of Ithaca. Still over on the far side of the field. Connor Bonawal making a run for it. Left foot cross inside the 18. Almaden Hassani trying to make a chase for it out at the top of the 18. Losing it right at the 18. Looking for some help. Here's Mason Wolf of the right foot. He trips up a Vestal player. And a player getting hit hard right on the knee. And a whistle blows. We're going to have an injury timeout. And that, that, that stinks. Oh. That's the Vesto player coming out to get a block, and Mason took a full-blooded swing at it, and that that's one that that's going that's, that'll sting tomorrow. Those, those are ones you get your foot turned just the wrong way, take out a meniscus, ACL. Those, 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 you hate you hate those for every everybody involved. And again, that's just two players going in hard, and Mason took a full wind up and just struck through the ball and. Bodies are made of ligaments and tendons, and they can catch the brunt of all of that. And that Vestal player don't have his number yet, but he caught all of that. You can hear the hit from up here. and Unfortunately, not quite sure who that Vestal player is down on the ground. He's on his knees and kind of just has his head on the turf. Uh, that, that's, a, that's a lightning bolt 
through oh. your knee. I've, I've been on the end of those, and you don't like it. And <laughs> that's one you say to yourself that I really need to go into that with two minutes and 40 seconds to go. It's still hard to see from up here. That might be Danny Burnett, yeah. He's getting that right leg stretched out just a little bit by the Ithaca trainers. Here from Joe Morasco Stadium. The clock has stopped at 2 minutes and 40 seconds. And Ithaca has a 3-0 lead. In tonight's match, looks like Brandon McCreary will get ready to come in for the first time tonight. He'll take over, I'm sure, for Danny Burnett. Still down on the ground now, getting helped up from head coach Dave Barr. And he's not really putting that much pressure. He's walking off on his own power, though. No, nah, he don't want to put any pressure on that thing. That, oh. that, like, that's nasty. That's nasty, man. I mean, I, I mean, again, that, that's you go in thinking, let me go block this shot. You catch it just the wrong way with your foot, just angled the wrong way, and it feels like your knee is exploding. And again, it is a, definitely a good sign that he's walking off on his own power, but he's, he's going to feel that one in the morning. He was getting some help from Dave Barr, his head coach. and Coach Barr wrapping his arm around him, trying to help him walk off the field. Burnett wanted nothing to do with that. Quickly took it off and walked off the field, as we mentioned, on his own power. So good to see. Two minutes and 40 seconds to play as the whistle blows. We're back with the action. 3 nothing IHS near sideline. The ball goes out of play. And the Little Red fans to our right sensing victory now. Nicholas Cancalosi, Dean, coming into the match after that brief timeout. Ball goes out of play near sideline. Last touch by Vestal. Deep in the offensive third. Ithaca will get set for the throw-in. Araneo getting a touch. For IHS, Salco Camo through defenders. Ball goes out of play near sideline. And that go over the goal line, I think it may have, and that will be just the second corner kick of the night. Both of them going to Ithaca. They had a corner early in the first half, and now late here in the second, under two minutes to play. From the near corner arc, they send this one off. Ball bouncing atop the 18. Almaden Hassani, fancy footwork, losing the ball. Nicholas Cantalosi, Dean. Losing it near sideline. Andrew Araneo helping him out, though. Kyle Barr through traffic. Desperation now for the Golden Bears with a buck 30 to play. Down by three. Whistle blows offside of going against the Ithaca Little Red. So Vestal quick to resume. Ithaca still on the attack. They've been, they've been attacking for, for 80 minutes. And again, it's not aesthetically pleasing at all times, but that is one thing that they have been. They've looked to threaten that Vestal 18-yard box and that Vestal back line for 89 minutes now and they're still in the last minute of the game pushing forward for the fourth goal. Tonight's broadcast brought to you by Kegel Landscape. Stop by on North Trip Hammer Road for a great selection of specialty pumpkins, gourds and fall foliage trees and shrubs. Under a minute now. 47 seconds. The ball takes a hop out of play right in front of midfield. Vestal throwing coming up. Tom Dyfenbauer sends the throwing in. Salco Camo battling for the ball for IHS, getting tripped up, and Brandon Lindemann's going to be called with a push. Not really sure if there was much of a push there. The Vestal crowd certainly doesn't like it. 23 seconds to play in tonight's match, and Salco Camo resumes play. Nicholas Cancalosi Dean sending it to Camo. Now 10 seconds. Ball makes its way to Johnson on this will all but do it. And for the first time since 1997, the Ithaca Little Red stack boys soccer champions with a 3 nothing win over the Vestal Golden Bears. The team celebrating on the field, some fans starting to pour onto the field as well. The Little Red snapping the drought to win its first stack championship in quite some time and ending the Vestal Golden Bears streak of trying to win back-to-back -back stack titles. Well deserved, Nick. And I think we've seen the stacks best, whether it's Elmira, Horace Haynes, uh, Corning, Vestal. 
you've seen Johnson City play, hands down, the guys at the trophy at the end of the season, Ithaca Little Red, best team in the stack this year, by possibly the best team in the section. Uh, congratulations to them. It's been a long, long time coming, and it was something that the boys definitely came into the season thinking that they'd compete for, and they got to feel pretty good about doing it at home, doing it against their rival Vestal. Multiple goal game, getting the shutout. Outstanding performance by the Little Red tonight. Again, not the most aesthetically pleasing, but definitely workmanlike, definitely well-deserved champions. Little Red, the boys on 13. Not bad. Little Red coming away with a 3 nothing win. Improving to 13-3 and three on the year with the victory and the championship. The Vestal Golden Bears with the loss falling to 11 Three and one. Two of those losses on the season now coming from the Little Red this season. Stick with us. Plenty of post game coming up. We'll break down this game. We'll head down to the field, talk with the head coach of the Little Red, Gilbert Antoine, maybe a couple of players or two as the Little Red snaps the streak, ends the drought. Since 1997, the Little Red has not won a stack championship, but tonight they can walk away and call themselves champions as they leave Joe Moresco Stadium. Stick with us. Post game's coming up on ESPN Ithaca and ESPNIthaca.com.